So 100th Division was a little bit more... It, it was a different. It, uh -huh. You know, when I was at Camp Brewery on the 42nd, I couldn't wait. I'd run to look, check the shipping lists because they were transferring. It was a training division. Mm -hmm. They were transferring guys into other divisions every once in a while. And I was waiting. This, I couldn't wait to see if my name was on the shipping list. And finally, one day, I was on the shipping list to go to the 100th Division. I was, I was actually glad that, that day that we, that I got to leave there. Well, you thought that you figured Gosh, that... I tell you, I, I, I disliked that outfit. It just, uh, they were just playing me in long. They weren't, as far as training, I didn't know. And on the first night we got there, we left Shepherd Field. Texas and I rode the train all night, sitting up. We got into the Camp Groover about late at night. And we got off and a company commander was, we were supposed to sign to it, the company we were assigned to. It. He was there to meet the train. And we unloaded and the first thing he did was get us into a, some building close by and he had us a lecture. I remember the first thing he said. He said, I know you guys have your hearts set on wings and bars, he said, but I'll make infantrymen out of you whether you like it or not. He said, <laughs> That's the first words I heard from. I couldn't hardly really stand this item after that. He was our company commander. 42nd. Huh? In the 42nd. 42nd. Yeah. Doc, so I got to our company in Fort, Fort Bragg, and Captain Huberger came up to the bar. We were, uh, there was about four or five of us that had been in a Air Corps. And we were assigned there, and four, four or five of us assigned to Company F. And we were up in the barracks, just sitting up there waiting, and Captain Uger came right up to the barracks and sat down on the bunk and talked to us. And I thought to myself, talk about a different person. <laughs> they wouldn't even come. That other guy, he, I, I had no respect for him. Uh -huh. And then here comes Captain Uger, just the opposite. He talked like a... Like, So the first thing he said, I, he told us, he said, I know you, I know you guys are disgusted. You want to stay in the flight training, you know. I said, I understand that. But uh, there's anything I can do about it or anything you can do about it, you know. It, it's just the way it is. He said, the only thing I can do. Or he said, if you want to go, go to OCS at Fort Benning, you can go. You're qualified. You go to officer training. He said, you can do that because you're qualified. I, I can do that much for you, he said, if you want it. Well, I maybe should have tried it, you know. But I, I wasn't much in the mood for doing it at all more volunteering. <laughs> And he, uh, I can never hear Schubert or ever saying any uh, uh, derogatory words to anyone. Yeah. So they want to talk about a different person. <laughs> and the same way with the other guys in the 39 in our, in our platoon and company F. They weren't these, they, they weren't these, uh, uh, trying to make life as mean for he could. And the 42nd, I think it did come over seas later on, the rainbow. Uh -huh. Later on in the war, but I don't think they were there just about the war's end. Evidently, they thought they were a training division. Uh -huh. For some reason or other, they didn't uh, send them overseas until 
Late.